Africa, and a very warm welcome to Afternoon Express. My name is Jeannie Mabonengdi. <laughs> <laughs> a big welcome indeed. And I'm Bonnie Mbuli. Also a big welcome to our viewers in Namibia and Botswana and all over Africa. Today is Motivation Monday, so we've got some great health and wellness advice for you on the show. It's so awesome to actually be here on the live show. I mean, just five seconds before live, we're thinking, oh my goodness, we've actually got a show we to do. We were taking selfies. We're not here just to take <laughs> selfies today. But we do have an incredibly inspiring show for you today. We have Japanese-born babe and TV presenter, Lala Hirayama, yeah. in our love today. And she's, she's magnificent. Oh, she's on fire. Absolutely incredible. And we're also going to be discussing detoxing because everybody's tried a detox diet every now and then in their lives. And I don't know about you, but I I really struggled, a struggle to stick to mind. So we have dietitian yeah. Sue Scharf in the loft, who's going to be telling us and debunking all of these detox myths. Yeah, we're also talking anxiety. What is it and how is it different to stress? So in the, in the loft today, we have psychometrist Dawn Ellingson, who's going to be breaking it down for us. And of course, please join the conversation on social media at Afternoon Chat on Twitter, hashtag Afternoon Express, or comment on our Facebook page. And of course, we're on Instagram, we're everywhere. And now there's also someone else in the loft who gives me anxiety every yeah. time he tries to <laughs> tell a joke. It's Danilo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good afternoon, South Africa. My name is Danilo Acristo. And as the ladies did mention, we've got the beautiful Lala Hirayama with us today. Now, first oh, of all, you're gosh. my new colleague on Good Hope. So High five. Big welcome to the SABC Thank family. You. It's really good to have you with us it's here today. So great. And here you're going to be part of our discussion on anxiety. Do you suffer from anxiety? Severely. Mm. Panic and anxiety disorder has plagued my life for the past four or five years. So apparently my jokes are not going to help you out today. So we'll try and keep those to a minimal <laughs> when we're on the couch. But we'll chat to you later on. We've also got Hannah Lurie joining us in the kitchen today. Now, Hannah, we're making kale-infused pancakes with trout and obviously goat's cheese, which sounds so delicious and different. Tell us more about this recipe. Well, it's the kind of way I like to eat at home, so I'm really obsessed with kale at the moment. Mm -hmm. So I just found it's a good way to get like my friends and like some of my friends' kids to eat vegetables. It's like blended in a pancake. Yes, so Any, anyone likes a good pancake. And it's one of the newest, freshest ingredients out at the moment, so we'll be getting to that later on in the show. You, however, need to go to afternoonexpress.co.za. This recipe and the shopping list is available for you. You can cook along with us live on air today. Otherwise, 083-913-3728 is the number you can dial to be uh, get hold of us on the show and chat to our guests live. Otherwise, as the ladies did mention, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is where it's at today. In the meantime, though, we're moving from the kitchen to the couch. Jeannie's standing on by, by on the couch with Sunani. Thanks, Danilo. Now, she was born in Umtata in the Eastern Cape and discovered a love for the game of hockey when she was in primary school. Today, she is the goalkeeper for the South African national hockey team with more than 100 games behind her name. And she's rep represented the country at two Olympic Games. Joining us on the couch is Sanani Mangisa. Welcome. Thanks, Jeannie. Thanks for having me at the loft. I'm so pleased to have you here, although I do have a little bit of a bone to pick with you. I took your trainer. You took my trainer. <laughs> I thought you were going to bring that up. I had the best personal trainer in the entire country. And then he got promoted to travel the world and train at the SA Girls uh, hockey team. And you're looking better than ever. Thank you. Thank you so much. So and you're not getting him back because he's ours now. I know. Jono, if you're watching... <laughs> We're going to make time, my boy. We're going to make time. <laughs> okay, firstly, let's go right to the beginning because you've had such a fantastic career and you're still only 26, well, you're only 26 years old and yet you've had such an amazing sporting career. How did it all start? A young girl in Umtata, you decided hockey was going to be your game. Yeah, that was it. Uh, it was basically I had to play summer sport and a winter sport and I was kind of like, oh, what's this hockey thing? Okay, and I started playing it. And then, as they say, the rest is history. I've never looked back from there. Kind of played it at high school through provincial teams and then got a lucky break into the national team. What is it? I mean, because obviously a lot of people, I think if you look at boys' schools, rugby and that kind of thing, always when kids come from better schools, they excel better at rugby and things like that. But there must have been so much magic in you in hockey for you to then be discovered from such a young age to go and play for, for national and provincial teams. Yeah, I had a passion for it, and that showed in my game. I just wanted to be out on the field playing the whole town. And then from that, I just made, as I said, national uh, junior national teams. And from then on, just, just uh, went to varsity, played at varsity, and then I just, my love, hockey. Wow, how, how often do you play? I mean, is it a sustainable career? 
Um, in, the, in South Africa, no. We I hold another job at the same time as playing hockey. Yeah. And I think we, we travel a lot, so I'm, my boss is quite flexible with me being away and that kind of Thankfully. stuff. Thankfully. Oh, gosh, yeah. So it's, it's quite nice that we, we're able to play hockey and do other stuff. But ideally, I would like to play as a professional, like other countries. But at the moment, that's not available in South Africa and that we try to balance it out. Why is that not available in South Africa? Is it a shortage of sponsorships? Is it a shortage of perhaps a hockey audience? Um, I think it's, it's a bit of both. There's, there is a shortage of sponsorship for us to go professionally and I think that tide is slightly changing because a lot of players are playing overseas and then coming back and then applying the professional model here. So it's, it's the tide is changing. A, a few years time we might see people, the sport being professional in the country. Yeah, I don't like when people bring in, you know, the sexist argument. But is it different for female hockey teams as it is for male hockey teams at the moment in South Africa? Yeah, it's, a, it's a different. We, funny enough, we're in a lucky spot because we are back more uh, as a hockey team. No way. So, uh, so, so a male uh, hockey goalkeeper will also not be able to play hockey full time? No, not at all. Okay. So we, we, the girls got, get a lot more sponsorships. I think where we are in our dynamic of the country is like you support more females and they understand that and we're doing slightly better than the guys so in terms of world <laughs> rankings so go <laughs> add that in there so yeah the, the, the girls are more supported than the guys in our country that is fantastic yeah. now let's just discuss how great you girls are and how successful you are I mean you did the Commonwealth Games you did Beijing Olympics what have been the other major world tournaments that you've played in I think and, we, tra and excel. we travel around the world playing hockey there's uh, I mean I've been to Scotland to play in, in the championships there Beijing was a highlight for my it was I was a little 19 year old at uh, my first Olympic Games and you kind of like starstruck because you I mean you walk in and you sitting next to Roger Federer at the table and that's that's Are Olympics joking? no and okay, then how but was you that? just you got to compose <laughs> yourself because you there for a reason and he's there for the exactly the same reason to compete so you kind of like compose yourself from here to compete at a national level but yeah. it, uh, yeah you travel the world you play in different tournaments and definitely um commonwealth in india and beijing have been two of my highlights you know roger federer's uh, mother is actually south, south african, african so yes. did, did he have a nice affection for you <laughs> he did he did uh, we took a group photo with him and he was kind of like a bit warm to the south african women's hockey team so that was quite nice but he is handsome. He hey. is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, I mean, th throughout your career, you've been excelling. And then just before the Olympics, you know, you had a, a, an injury that almost threatened to end your career. What yeah. happened there? Uh, we were with John, funny enough. We were at gym doing what I do every single day, a bit of shuffles. And as I turned around, I heard this loud snap. And then as really? I looked at my calf, it started, like, kind of rolling up <gasps> to the top of no. my back. It, yeah. So I was like, okay, I think I'm fine. I'll take another step. He's looking at me with his eyes this big at the moment. I take another step and my whole leg just buckles. I had snapped my Achilles. So I had a race against time because we had six months to the next big tournament and to be eligible for selection, I had to come back in about three and a half months. And your Achilles is anything between six and nine months, six to nine months, yeah. So- Okay, um, is your Achilles this massive Thing yes, here. that this, is it, this, and it connects this, your the foot. Tendon. Yeah. So what the doctor does actually, when you come into the doctor to get assessed whether you've snapped it or not, he sort of squeezes your your calf, and you should get a reaction in your foot because yes. it's attached. So I was lying on my stomach, he squeezed, and my foot just stood still. So and this he tendon again. over here actually just snapped yeah, in half, in half, like a rubber so band. Yeah, just yeah, that's exactly it. A rubber band, and then the rest of your calf muscle curls up to the top. So oh, you got a ball of goodness. a calf right at the top of your your calf and you, you now basically you don't have a, a leg from your knee down because as you try to put weight on it your whole leg just buckles that must have been so tremendously yeah. painful it, it's not well for, for me it wasn't okay. because i'd fully snapped it had it been slightly attached then that's the most painful thing okay. but i had done such a good job <laughs> of yeah, it okay. that uh, that i wasn't in pain john and i were actually joking around from from the gym to the doctor we're like oh He's like, if I can get guys back, this is easy for you, man. And <laughs> yeah, three and a half months of rehab. Okay. About it's, it's, it's strenuous. It's about six hours of rehab a, a day. So I had to go through that every single day and um, literally wow. fend off myself. And uh, and you can't you can't drive yourself anyway. You're reliant on people. Yeah. And you, but you, there's a goal. I had an end goal. I think exactly. that's what helped me. So each day I would just wake up, make sure I do my rehab, 
and get back into it. So what do you do in that time while you're doing your rehab? Because I'm, I suppose a lot of that has to be, that time has to be taken to make you mentally strong again so that you can go out and conquer the hockey yeah. world. My, my first actually biggest one was that I could not pick on weight. Because yeah. you know, you're know you trying to do rehab and I could not pick on weight. So that was a mental thing. The second one, with the goal, I kind of knew, okay, I need to make world champs. I need to make world Oi. champs. So you have that goal. And Mentally you are going to now do the, yeah. the next Olympics, I think, Rio, yeah. you're going to. So, yeah, Rio's oh. coming up, so I'm quite excited about that. So those kind of injuries make exactly. you mentally tougher. Yeah. Well, we're going to be chatting to you a little bit later and, of course, taking questions from all of your fans out there. I'm dying to know more. There's so many things I want to ask you. But first, let's get to some more glamorous conversations. Just a reminder to go out and get your 50 Rand off SA's number one foundation just by purchasing Revlon Colorstay Foundation now at any leading retail and pharmacy stores nationwide. All you have to do is take a selfie with the product and you and your plus one, your bestie, or perhaps your lover, could win a 24-hour experience in Bonang's life. Hanging here on set, enjoying the city life by dining at one of her favorite restaurants, staying at her favorite hotel, and turning love on. Whether you're in love or looking for love, just take a pic of you and your Revlon Colorstay Foundation and tweet at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Foundation Fridays or the hashtag Love is On or post it on our Facebook page, Afternoon Express. Now, this amazing prize is valued at 25,000 Rand, and it includes an all-expenses-paid trip to Cape Town for two, dinner at an A-list restaurant, plus a 10,000 Rand shopping spree. So get tweeting right now, just like these viewers have done already, and don't forget the hashtags, Foundation Fridays and Love is On. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, South Africa. So in the kitchen today, we're making a delicious kale pancake, and we're filling it with some trout as well as goat's cheese. And joining us today is uh, Hannah Lurie. Now, Hannah, obviously kale is the big uh, seasonal vegetable at the moment. Everyone's talking about it. And I'm really glad that you kind of brought this one into this meal, but you're not only putting it inside, you're making it part of the pancake mix. Yes, definitely. Well, I think it's a good way to incorporate something, especially like this, because it can, if they, you do get like older leaves, it can be a bit tough but they're still like so full of nutrients. So it's a good mm. way to like incorporate it into a dish if you Amazing. Want to so I want to help you because I obviously like making pancakes. You're going to be showing us how to make a basic pancake batter, but you're going to show us also how to add this in at the end. So what can I do? So basically you can just take the beautiful leaves off of the stalk because we don't really want the stalk because that's a bit too tough and hasn't got much flavor. Oh, is it really? So okay. if you don't mind taking the leaves off about six to eight of those, that would be fantastic. Cool. And then I'm just going to add um, one cup of flour into here so long. The basic rule of pancakes is normally one cup of flour, one cup of milk, and an egg, but we're wow. adding a little bit more milk for this one. How come? Well, just to compensate for the kale? Yes, so okay. it needs to just be a little bit looser, and you don't really want like thick like breakfast pancakes. Mm -hmm. We want to make them a bit savory, so that we can make them. I kind of want to use it as like a wrap, I guess. Yes. So, yeah. What is the difference between a wrap mix and a pancake mix? So obviously this isn't really like a wrap mix because yeah. I think wrap mix is more about like made with hot water, batter and flour mm, with okay. a little bit of salt. And then this one's more like it's a richer, softer, kind of silky wrap. Cool. For I can't even count. Word. Sorry, you're busy talking. I forgot to count. One, <laughs> two, three, four. That's six. Okay, I okay. didn't manage I to I think that should be six. more than enough for now oh. for what we're going for. And we're also going to add like a little bit of nutmeg in here. Ooh. Just because nutmeg and spinach are a marriage, well, a match made in heaven in my books. And obviously, can, can you replace this kale with something like spinach or, or a baby leaf? Or is kale... Yeah, it's amazing with baby spinach. It's oh, is really it really? Beautiful. Okay, cool. Yeah, just in case. It's actually nice if you kind of combine both of them yeah. together. Ooh. So I kind of guess it's whatever you can get your hands on. It's also nice with like grated baby marrow or anything like that. Liquor. So now we're going to add our pancake mix into here. Mm -hmm. Nice thing about having one of those mixes is that it does it all for you, which rocks. But exactly. obviously you can just mix it by hand. This only thing is this won't blend. You need to yes. blend this separately. Yeah, so it's actually a, like a really big part of the recipe is to do it in here. Because you don't really want all those big stringy bits that yeah. you're going to like take a bite and then you're going to have a really... <laughs> a big leaf popping yeah. out of your mouth. Okay. So, pop this lid on. Yeah, if you don't mind to pop that on. Sure. And then just give it a bit of a whirl and I'll get the heat on. What are we, are you obviously making a bit of trout uh, later on to go inside this, but for now we're just going to show you how to make the batter. Yes, for now we're just making the pancakes. Cool. And Concentrating on making a good thing. Cool. How long does this need to go in for? Like completely as fine as possible, right? As fine as possible. Yeah, I think that should be about right. That's right. 
Yeah, perfect. So it's got a beautiful, vibrant green color. Mm. It's kind of like a Popeye, Popeye. Ooh, Popeye. <laughs> a Popeye <laughs> <laughs> pancake. So, yeah. It smells amazing. So we're going to get this. I'll show you guys how to pour that into the pan and get it done and dusted. Yeah. And we'll be making the innards in just a bit. But don't forget, after an express.co.za is where you can download the recipe and the shopping list. It's really, really simple to use. And this is something that you can probably compare with pretty much anything. So it's one of those recipes you always want to download. Replace like your kale with something else later yes. on in the season, whatever the seasonal Very versatile, vegetable. but kale at the moment is just definitely the way to go. Awesome, fantastic. Mm. But right now though, this is going to go into the pan. And in the meantime, We've got uh, Bonnie standing by on the couch with the beautiful and absolutely talented Lala Hirayama. <laughs> Thank you, Danilo. Now, she's born in Japan, and her family made their way to South Africa when she was only four years old, and today she's one of South Africa's it girls. She's an actress, a dancer, TV presenter, and model. Joining us on the couch is the beautiful Lala Hirayama. Wow, Ooh, that intro. I want to get intro to you everything like that. When flame. I walk in the room, that, that's what <laughs> they need to say. <laughs> Well, welcome to The Loft, darling. Oh, thank you so much. It's great to be here. Yeah, lovely amazing. to have you. It's been fantastic. I absolutely. absolutely love it. And so do you. Look oh, at you. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Don't stop. So you came to South Africa when you were four years old yes. from Japan. What was it like for this young little girl arriving in South Africa? And you're so unique because you call yourself the original African, right? right? Because of your unique heritage. Tell me about it. Oh, look, it wasn't easy. I was bullied pretty much my entire primary school life for it. Um, yeah, I, I didn't really fit in. Mm -hmm. um, I was different from, f from the first day I, I entered school and kids picked that up and oh, they're not. So cute, <laughs> so cute. <laughs> and they're, uh, kids are, you know, they, when they see something that's not normal, they pick on it. They're mm -hmm. not afraid to, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, and so I hated primary school and I hated being different. And I didn't understand sure. why we couldn't be normal and why I couldn't just... Um, just fit in. Just fit yeah. in, yeah, yeah. just yeah. like me. Why don't you like me? Oh my gosh. Uh, it was really difficult. Yeah. My parent, my dad was in the principal's office more than he wasn't. So it was, it was a really rough time. Wow, I can relate to that. And we'll talk about why in a short bit. Okay. But your, your father is a Jewish Sangoma. Yes. And your mom is Japanese. Oh, what? <laughs> I mean, what's that family dynamic oh, like? Oh, man. It, you know, outside, when I sit outside the house, I hated it because I was so different and everyone teased me. But back yeah. home, it's, there's nothing more amazing than being with my family and my parents. My mom is traditional Japanese. Mm -hmm. um, she studied, or she's raised Shinto, which is a type of Japanese religion. Okay. But then she uh, went to America and became Christian. Mm -hmm. And now she studies Buddhism. And my oh. father was raised Jewish and um, studied American Indian ways, the Native American Indian oh. ways, uh, Sangoma and Yanga. And do some and of those ways assist you in very mysterious ways? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, I think it, it grounds me more than anything. Yeah, yeah. It gives me a sense of, number one, uh, pride in um, who I am, my heritage. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud and patriotic. Mm -hmm. um, and that gives me a sense of self and a sense of self-esteem. Wow. Um, so it, it really has grounded me. Right. And you describe yourself as a go-getter and a go-maker. Yeah. What's the latter? What's a go-maker? A go-maker, a go-getter is there's something there and that's what I want. Right. And you go and get it. Mm -hmm. A go-maker for me is someone who goes, I want to create something. I want to make something. And that's then not make here. That doesn't exist. That doesn't exist that no one knows about and then make it happen. Wow. And make it big. And that's... That's what I aim to do. That's yeah. what I want to do. I don't want to, you know, I want to be original. I don't want to follow the crowd. I don't want to do what everyone else is yeah, doing. Yeah, you know, yeah, that yeah. frustrates me. You want to do me. it your way. Yeah. Well, you're definitely making that work for you. Now, you're a, you. a dancer, a presenter, an actress, and just an all-round amazing woman, Thank right? You and you used to dance for Lebo Matosa. I did. What's oh. that like? Man, that's a, you know, I think about it. I still sometimes get quite emotional. She, uh, I was 19. Mm -hmm. And funny enough, I was on a different TV program. I was I was a kids presenter, and I had interviewed her on my show. And um, she said to me, oh, "I've seen you dance. I saw you dance with Black Eyed Peas, and I really want you to come dance wow. for me." So I was like, "All right, cool." And nothing ever happened. Um, and a day before she was going to perform at the Mobo Awards in London, her manager called me, and she's like, "Listen, I know you have a Japanese passport, and I need you to get to London tomorrow." I was like, what? How amazing. <laughs> so that's actually how I started dancing yeah, for level. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I literally learned her entire choreography on an on a eight-hour flight, nine-hour flight <laughs> to London, arrived, performed at the MOBO Awards, 
which is huge. I mean, Beyonce is there, Ashwara, yes. Snoop Dogg. I was just like, wait, hang on. I was, in, what, 19? Yeah. Um, and that was crazy. And you knew it from then on that, like, the sky was the limit yeah. for you. Listen, Big things were on their way. But Level definitely um, made me realize that anything's possible. Anything's possible, of course. And yes. the fact that she, she shone so brightly kind of let me, allowed me, yeah. you know, unconsciously to shine. Yeah. yeah. Talking about shining, mm. um, we have something in common. Tell We've me. both struggled with anxiety or are struggling with anxiety, Ooh, right? That's a big and, one. And being in a space where you shine and, and the spotlight is always on you um, is quite a difficult thing to, to navigate. Yeah. How are you navigating that space? There's something called the emotional freedom technique which mm -hmm. um, has really helped me a lot with anxiety and panic disorder. My aunt passed away. Um, I was dealing with a lot of stress and everything, I was normal, you know, handling. And when everything kind of started dying down, all of a sudden I thought I was dying. Like I had a yeah, moment, yeah. I, was, I was sitting in a makeup room, having my makeup done, and the next thing I thought I was having a heart attack. A panic attack? Were you having a panic attack? It was a proper mm -hmm. full-on panic attack. And mm -hmm. I didn't know, and at that time I was like, oh my gosh, spirits. Okay, my ancestors are coming, something's going on. Yeah, Because yeah. you don't know what it is. You don't know what's right? hitting you. You, you think can't you're breathe, dying, literally. you think you're dying, your heart is pounding, you go blind partially, well, I go blind partially, my hands wow. and my, my feet experience like pins and needles. Um, and I, I didn't know what was going on. But anyway, so finally got diagnosed. And, um, you know, they want to put you on medication. Yes, of course. And I'm just not about that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And dad's putting me on a ton of herbs, <laughs> <laughs> obviously. So you found other ways of, um, of dealing with yeah. this. So mm -hmm. um, tapping is a phenomenal yes, way, yes. you know, it's to deal with it. It's got a bit to do with body talk as well. Yes. Yes, something, yeah, 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 it's amazing. And how do you deal with it? Body talk, I do lots of yoga. Right. I breathe because I find I'm a shallow breather and that doesn't help when you, when you struggle with anxiety. Sure. One th quick question. Mm. A lot of last week was the uh, finale of Strictly Come Dancing. Right. And a lot of people who've been on it, I've heard them say they'll never enter again. Yes. And you've said the same thing. Can yes. you tell us why? <laughs> What's going on over there? It is hectic. <laughs> oh, wow. I have such <laughs> a respect for people who mm -hmm are a part of these reality shows yeah. because you don't really know what goes on behind the scenes yeah. and the emotional, um, the emotional stuff that comes with it. And people yeah. are not shy on social media. No. They are, they are out there no, to they get will you. Massacre you. Funny enough, I, it was one of my, I think it was semi final or something, I had a panic attack during my performance. Oh, wow. And I ran off and I had half of South Africa bully me on Twitter. But like so ugly, like oh, you're such a fake, and you just want sympathy votes, and da da da, and I was literally dying, and oh my gosh, <laughs> it was so hard. I to remember deal with having that. a panic attack on Survivor. Ah. So I know exactly what that yeah, feels like. But yeah, we're going to yeah. chat more about that in a little bit. Thank you so much. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. After the break, we take a deeper look into anxiety and how it can affect our lives. And a reminder to enter our Go Green SMS competition. You have until midnight tonight to answer last week's question. All the details are available on our website at afternoonexpress.co.za. We'll be right back. The Afternoon Express team is going green. Join us every Tuesday at 4 p.m. until September as we bring you the most innovative trends in sustainable fashion, food, decor and design, as well as handy tips to help you reduce your carbon footprint. Answer our Go Green question every Tuesday and stand a chance to win a thousand Rand Woolies gift card every week. Plus, simply by entering, you also go into the big draw for the ultimate grand prize worth over half a million rand. Including a dream sustainable kitchen makeover from Cordev fitted with Bosch appliances with 300,000 rand. Also, up to 250,000 rand worth of home upgrades so you can live off the grid. Plus, food and homeware from Woolworths valued at 75,000 rand. And a 25,000 rand towards a school of your choice with my school. So, go big. Go Green with Afternoon Express every Tuesday at 4 p.m. to win these amazing prizes. Express yourself. Willis and I are collaborating to raise 100 million rand through the My School program. Are you with us? Welcome back to Afternoon Express on SABC3. Now, many people suffer from anxiety, and many do so in secret without really understanding how it works or how to control it. Joining us today is psychometrist Dawn Ellingson, and she's here to shed some light on anxiety and how we can work through it. Welcome, Dawn. Thank you. Thank you. 
Dawn, what is anxiety? Well, firstly, I must say it's been quite wonderful listening to your story and to Lala's. It's very brave to admit it because yeah. very often people like you who are so in, you know, out there and in society, people think, wow, you know, it must be so nice to have everything together and mm -hmm. they don't realize sometimes there are these issues yeah. and that they need to be conquered and that they can be conquered. Yeah. So having a look at, at anxiety, basically we have stresses in life. We all have stress. And stress is basically something that we perceive as a threat in our environment. Whether it is or not is not the issue. The fact that we perceive it as a threat is important. And anxiety then is a reaction to the threat. Now usually in a normal situation when there is stress and anxiety, once the stress has been removed, the anxiety levels drop. Right. For some people, that does not it happen. Yeah, yeah. And that, when that happens, what happens is that anxiety pervades. It almost creeps into every avenue of the person's life. And their reaction is that there is something. It's a feeling of deep angst. It's always there like a black Something's cloud. Something's wrong. Something's yeah. wrong. And you ask them what it is, and you just can't quite, but it's there. Yeah, yeah. It eats away yeah. behind you or in your mind. That's so accurate. And so there's a difference between general anxiety, general, general anxiety disorder, which is GAD, yes. and just normal anxiety. Absolutely. Can you differentiate for us? Basically, there's a continuum. As I said, if someone does have a bit of anxiety, it tends to drop. We yeah. all have anxiety. A normal, it's a normal reaction. Yes. But what happens with GAD or general anxiety disorder is that over time, and usually it's a six-month period, it has to be properly diagnosed, but the person starts worrying about things more than they're not worrying. And it, sure. as I said, it basically overtakes all areas of their, of life, their life. And the, the, it, it's debilitating, yes. quite frankly. And what happens then is, if you look at the worry, I don't like using the word irrational because it sounds like, oh, well, don't yeah, worry about it. Yeah, because to the person it. it seems completely irrational. Absolutely. Yeah. But if you actually start digging deeper, they can't really put their finger, finger on, on it. it. Right. And how do I know when I'm suffering from severe anxiety? Okay. Obviously, people, you, you start having um, reactions like not sleeping, not mm -hmm. being able to eat. You're always focusing on these worries. They come into your head all the time. And there are a whole lot of symptomatic things. The best thing to do is to actually approach one's doctor or a psychologist and to be properly diagnosed. Yes. Because obviously there, is there, there, there are things that can be done. Yeah. And there are uh, programs, as Lala mentioned earlier. And support, yes. Absolutely. And the sooner you, nip, you can get to it, the better. The better, because it can es escalate into something worse. Well, basically it escalates and it almost becomes more part of the way you see your world. So if you mm. can get it reasonably early mm. and start working with it, yes. you, you know, it, it hasn't become so habituated yeah. into your life. Yeah. Dawn, besides medication, everything. what yes. other ways can we treat anxiety? Well, for stress or anxiety, one of the best things, as you mentioned, is, is physical exercise. exercise. We are very yeah. much, you know, um, <laughs> biological beings and it, it, it helps us to reduce that level of stress in our stress hormones. So by doing exercise, yoga, dancing, anything that you enjoy, just getting out there and making yourself feel yeah. more relaxed through yeah. running away, as it were, from your stress in your body, yeah. it helps. Wow. Thank you so much, Dawn. A pleasure. We'll chat a little bit later sure. about that. Danilo is about to finish those delicious pancakes in the kitchen. Danilo. Absolutely, and I can tell you that food is probably the only thing that gets rid of my anxiety. And so I'm very excited today that myself and Hannah are going to be making these incredible kale pancakes. We've already uh, kind of done the pancakes themselves. So the kale mixture that we've made has now gone onto the pan. We've made the pancakes. We've now got to make the filling and the dressing, which has got a trout and goat cheese, lemon, mm, some amazing flavors in here. Yes, I'm very excited to share them with you. Cool. So basically, this is just my modern twist on cream cheese and smoked salmon like beanies. So they're like yes. pancakes kind of thing. Cool. So I just thought it would be nice to use some goat cheese and yogurt and make like a lemony tangy dressing for like oh, freshness. Sounds amazing. So if you want, you can get started on that for me yeah, if sure, you don't can mind. I do? um, you can just tip out um, some of the yogurt into that bowl and about... And I'm guessing you're using as thick a yogurt as possible, like a... Double thick Greek, double thick yogurt or Greek yogurt? Yes, like Willie's has got this amazing thick um, plain yogurt, 
and okay. it's just like it's nice because it has it doesn't release any water or mm. anything like that so it's got a nice texture Amazing. and then um you can add half of the the goat cheese if you want cool it might it might like have a little bit of a lumpy texture but that's quite nice because you don't know what you're going to get when you bite into it so just make sure you like goat cheese otherwise you can just use um cream cheese if you want to instead cool. yeah it's a nice little alternative that you've got there yes and then got some garlic and lemon juice, which is going to be amazing for that too. I just want to make sure that I can get this done properly. Is it mixing in nicely? Yes. No, don't be worried. Like, don't be afraid. It's all about homemade rustic look and feel, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So cool. I'll start to get chop these and then you can add a half a lemon Squeeze if you don't mind. Lemon. Yeah, that would be amazing. And then some garlic. So it's kind of like a take on tzatziki, I guess. Oh, I see. Without the cucumber. Going with, without the cucumber, without all the ingredients that go into well, tzatziki. Well, it's yogurt, adding lemon, lemon and, and, and <laughs> garlic. And <laughs> depends who you're asking, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't ask the Italians, because the Italians want to comment on the Greeks, and also, yeah, we're not going on there at the moment, so. Yes, yeah. no, we will. Mm -hmm. Things that we shall not mention. Yes. But anyway. So I'll start getting the pancakes and stuff ready. And if you don't mind, just to add a bit of the chives in there. And then, yeah. So also today we're going to be using um, smoked chaff ribbons. You can use smoked salmon if you like, but this is just a little bit more affordable. So it's more of an everyday Amazing. goodie. So we'll just... And trout also seems to be one of those fishes that everyone is so, so excited about at the moment. Yes, as it's an alternative. also, yeah, sustainable. Sassy green. Yes. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. I get overexcited about fish. <laughs> so, yeah. So I like to add just like a little bit of the baby leaves with it because they're a little bit sweeter and beautiful colors. It looks delicious. Yes. Mm. And then um, I just took a vegetable peeler and you just peel it down with cucumbers. Okay. Just to like, give you little ribbons. They're a bit nicer and for crunch. And did the same with some raw beetroots. Oh. Just to get all of the And all of your ingredients here seem to be quite raw, which rocks so much. The kale, everything is raw, nothing is cooked, which is cool. Yeah, so it's kind of like no mess, no fuss yes. kind of thing to make at home. Like, for, it's beautiful for brunch on the weekends or when you want to have people over. To get the family lunch. involved, everyone can kind of make their own DIY. Yes. Which rocks. Kale pancakes. Can I ask you one question? Yes. Can you show me how to fold the perfect pancake? <laughs> Now you're asking in full order. I think everybody has their own <laughs> version. I'll try my best. Because you seem to put all of your ingredients directly in the middle, which I've never done before. I've always told to like light and nice long line. So this is I interesting. I suppose I'm just doing the whole like food styling thing where it's no like pressure. everything's open. No pressure, Hannah. Okay. All on you. So I'm going to go in there for the kill. So I just take it, get it in there, nice and messy, okay, wrap it up real good, and then tuck Fold in. Fold it in. Tuck oh, in. is that how you do it? And then... There you go. So Ta no mess, no fuss. Take a little knife, slice it in half, and then there you go. Oh, it looks so delicious. Mm. I can't wait to take a bite into one of those. But high five, first of all. I'm very, very Daily impressed that you managed to do that. Thanks. Very cool. Don't forget <laughs> the recipe uh, for this. <laughs> the, well, the recipe for this is on afternoonexpress.co.za. The shopping list is also available for you. This is one of those awesome ones you want to download if you can and you are at home because this is a basic, uh, basic wrap that you guys can use for anything, a basic pancake mixture that you can make and add your own little fillings and toppings on the inside. In the meantime, South Africa, we're going to take a short commercial break. And when we come back, myself, Bonnie, Lala, and our psychometrist are going to be sitting down on the couch to talk anxiety. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, South Africa. So we're on the couch now with Dawn and Lala, and we're discussing anxiety and how we can overcome it. So what I want you to do is remember to give us a call right now on 083-913-3728 if you have any questions for our experts. And I know we had one from Facebook. Yes, thank you so much for your Facebook comment so far. Trevor Erasmus says, my question is, why do you feel so out of control, like it's the end of the world? Is there any way to fix what is broken without mental therapy? Thank you. Well, basically, it is a mental problem. When I say problem, it's, it's something that's happening, you know, mentally, there's a reason for it. So it's best to actually start off with being a diagnosed mm. and then seeing a doctor or seeing a psychologist, a clinical psychologist that can diagnose it properly mm. um, and working from there. 
Uh, obviously, you know, one has to do a lot of the work oneself, yeah, but otherwise you're punching in the dark. There sure. could be a whole lot of other things going on. You need a proper diagnosis. I think that I th when I used to struggle with anxiety, I think in yes. many ways you find your own coping mechanisms as you go. But the question I was asking Lala off air was around the chemical version of anxiety mm -hmm. or can it be brought on by just something that's going on in your life? Is it natural to feel anxious about maybe coming on live television? Is that is that of a normal course. kind of anxiety? That's Does everything need to be diagnosed? No. No, 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 no. If, if you have a look at when we start diagnosing, it's when something's been going on for a long time, when it's pervading the person's life, mm. when they actually are starting to feel debilitated by it, yes. when things like panic attacks, you both mm -hmm. said, when those sort of things start happening, you start to need to look deeper, and that's mm. when you need to have it properly diagnosed yes. and then decide. You know, these <coughs> days, doctors, psychologists, very often it's a, it's a two-way thing. You are mm. in a partnership. And no person, no one method is going to work for everyone. Right. So it's a case of yeah. everyone slightly different. Yours probably started with your bullying. Yeah. I mean, bullying is a horrendous thing for any child. It's funny, we, I was also bullied at school. And, and I find yeah. also the th memories that come to mind are yes. being in an environment that's unpredictable. So and it keeps you on your toes all the time. So you, you learn this behavior yes. of being constantly ready for an attack, attack. or a threat. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is that just never goes away. Right. And you tend to start generalizing it, that generalized disorder. Right. You generalize it to other areas of your life. And mm -hmm. that is where the almost illogical side comes in. Because, yes, it's happening here. But you've turned, it's not that you actually physically want to turn it, but it becomes something that sort of spreads out mm. yeah. and roots into everything. Yeah. And then everything is frightening. The, that's the thing. I mean, yes. you know, with normal anxiety, we were discussing, like you said, off air, yeah. normal anxiety is when, oh my goodness, I'm going to be on television or Absolutely. I'm going to be on stage. No, yes. And, uh, you know, a bit of yeah. flutter, I mean, flutter, I have, off you go. Exactly. I have panic attacks when I'm just standing in my kitchen oh. and sure. I literally just drop. Or I'll be driving on the highway and I have mm. to pull off because I mm. can't breathe. Oh, yeah. There's, you know, it just, yeah. It's random normal things that mm. you do and then yeah. it starts affecting just mm. funct normal mm. function. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And Dawn, once yeah. someone starts getting treatment, is it, does it ever go away or is it something that it's you're about learning to control it? it. Mm. It's, it's something that's got to, you've got to learn to control and or manage should I say and that is done through through therapy it's learning relaxation techniques yeah. you were talking sure. about yeah. tapping yeah. Um, it's finding what works for you yeah. absolutely yeah. so we'd love to know more of this uh, story and these coping mechanisms as we get into this discussion so we'll be back on the couch you South Africans can definitely give us a call 0839133728 and ask us any of your comments and questions on Facebook and Twitter we'd love to hear from you mm -hmm. this is a pertinent topic for I think a lot of young South yeah. Africans and South Africans as a whole uh, in our country so make sure you do get hold of us right now Jeannie standing by uh, with our dietitian. Thanks, guys. Now, let me paint this little picture for you. It's a Monday morning after a long weekend where you spent the majority of your time with a slab of chocolate in one hand and two liters of fizzy cool drink in the other hand and your face planted in a packet of chips and you feel bloated, tired, and you promise yourself that you will never do this again. It's time for a detox. Now you tell yourself you, as you look in the mirror, it's now time you're gonna do the best detox you've ever done in your life. Well, we've all been there and we've all made this promise to ourselves, but what does it really mean to detox? Joining us to help better understand what actually goes in on our bodies is a uh, dietitian, Sue Scharf. Welcome to Afternoon Express, Sue. Thank you. From a medical point of view, what mm. is the correct definition of the word detox? Well, medically speaking, anything that we consume, whether it be food, good or bad, drink, good or bad, medication, drugs and supplements, they all get processed, broken down in the body and transported in the bloodstream to the cells of our body, okay? And in the cells of the body, these are further processed. Yes. Now, of course, the cells are like little microscopic factories mm -hmm. and what happens yes energy is produced bodybuilding functions happening happen um, protective functions happen but of course waste products are produced and yes the waste then gets excreted back into the bloodstream and further eliminated from the body via the organs of elimination and detoxification and these organs are the liver the kidneys, and well, also the colon. So that's really what detoxification actually means. 
Okay. Then what are toxins? Yes. So toxins are actually the waste products. Okay. The waste products that occur as a result of the breakdown of all these nutrients and, well, non-nutrients as well. Okay, so then is detoxing actually incredibly necessary or does your body not have a way of detoxing on its own? Yes, that's the point, is our bodies are incredible. They do have a process, a means of detoxing all by itself without any assistance or help from any special supplements or products out there. And basically it's the liver or the kidneys, again, yeah. or the colon that will take responsibility for this. Okay, but then what does, because surely we can't do, be doing any harm to our body if we do go on a kind of a, a health detox. So what happens to our bodies if we go on, say, a seven-day cleanse? I mean, do, you know, are toxins actually flushed out of our body in those seven days of only drinking juice or only drinking water with maple syrup and cayenne pepper or whatever? Well, basically our bodies are actually capable of detoxing without theoretically having to go on a seven day cleanse. But to actually maybe go back one step, the problem does occur when one has overeaten on mm, the wrong <laughs> types of foods, you know, such as... Guilty. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> and refined starches, <laughs> sugars, too much salt, too much alcohol, yes. you know, and those then cause a buildup of waste products, certainly, which put incredible strain on these poor organs, yeah. and therefore one does physically feel um, a bit run down, lethargic, and has all these symptoms that you talk about, almost as being toxic. However, the best way to handle that is actually to go on a so-called clean diet, as it were, a okay. keeping plan, whereby one is including more of the whole grains, more fresh fruits and veggies, less salt, less yeah. alcohol, definitely cutting out the alcohol, and well, then to drink plenty, plenty of water. And yeah. that's really, really an important part of so-called flushing because it enhances or optimizes these organs, the yeah. liver and the kidney and the colon. Well, you know, working with Top Billing, I've been uh, tremendously close to Michael Moll, who was obviously mm. a presenter that worked with us for very many years. And forever, I remember him always saying, if ever I had a headache or I was feeling lethargic, he would always say, drink water. Don't even have a little headache tablet or say, just drink water. That was his answer to everything. So how much water should we be drinking every single day? Ideally, for an average adult, about two litres a day. Two and litres? Two litres. Eight <laughs> glasses of water a day is what it should be. If one is exercising, one will drink more. One will need more. <laughs> but one doesn't need to drink too much either. So okay. Can you over drink water? One can. Okay. Up to up to four litres would certainly be now really pushing it. You Thank know. you so much for chatting to us because now I don't have to go and drink all that green sludge. <laughs> Thank you very much for chatting to us. Thank After you. the break, we continue the conversation. So make sure you give us a call now on 083-913-3728 if you have any questions for our experts. We'll be right back after this.